Meeting to order, it's six o'clock. First on the agenda is Copley Trust. And first, first is a final approval for senior center funds. Do we have anybody to talk about that? Go ahead, Gloria. It was myself from the Copley Trust. Okay. Right, Folks that are called into our meeting, if you would please ensure that you are muted unless you're speaking. Thank you. Thank you. I think that worked. Yep. Go ahead, Gloria. Sorry. No, what uh, we've done since uh, we talked with you, uh, as the first of the year, our architect, Paul Kittridge, back to see if we had enough contingency funds in them. And uh, all we're waiting for now is to order the equipment. And the problem has been with the, getting a contract here this winter. And Village Builders, who was with us with the authorization project, they did put in the bid. Johnny Blade, uh, tried to the others, and they went into that. They were too busy. And we can't take the village business for a while, probably the first of March. So, actually, we're just waiting for the contractors and pitchers to deliver the equipment. It's a hard time to get the project done. It is. Well, and also, as far as pitchers go, uh, we don't know how available most of their equipment is. Right. So yeah, we don't have a, an idea really of when we would be opening up that kitchen because it depends on on the contractors and the equipment and then what's going on as far as the COVID and that kind of thing. Right. And, and there's no need of opening up the center if we don't have any applicants to, to come. Right. But we did. After Roy talked with Pittridge <clears throat> and checked on the cost of the equipment, which we knew would be going up in the first of the year, and it did go up. And uh, but we were pretty close. We are about twelve hundred dollars over what our estimate was, which, which isn't bad. Yeah. So you're looking just for the final approval of the funds for the project, yeah. right? And Gloria, having not had the, the contractor, have they given you a formal bid or have you told them the, the financial parameters they're working under based on what you've asked for here? Are they going to give you a, an additional bill above this dollar figure? Okay. And that's the only thing that we but the the dollar fifty two thousand five hundred fifty dollars total project includes their cost. Yes. I make a motion that we approve uh, the uh, fifty two thousand five hundred three dollars from the copy trust for cover the cost of the uh, renovations at the Memorial Senior Center. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Excuse me, the Royal County Civic. Thank you. I knew I was saying wrong. <clears throat> <laughs> Thanks, Gloria. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion is passed. Aye. Aye. Thanks, Brian. Aye. Thanks, Judy. Aye. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. I have a motion and a second to move the minutes. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is passed. Do we have anything else for Copley Trust? I just would mention I got a call from them saying, and they said they had a lot of cash, and they wanted to know how to invest 
Because they'd like to invest. <laughs> and I said, that's not up to me. It's up to Thomas. Right. And I asked him to give us some ideas when he might be able to get on the phone or right. whatever. Send us something. So when I hear, I'll speak to Dan and maybe we can sneak it into the Sure. Well, we have to, I just got to let the board know, because you have to have another meeting in the near future, because there's two outstanding requests. There was one for the country club. Yes. And I think there was one for the uh, uh, observatory, too, so that you're going to have to do final approval on those. So those are coming up to get, come back and get final approval. Like, I look at the dates and make yeah, sure. Yeah, let me have the dates and then I'll contact Yeah, you. I'll, I'll look at those tomorrow. Because um, I think the one, the country club was on those minutes. In December, I think the observatory yeah. in November. So that one comes up soon in the country club. So there's probably another two meetings here in the near future anyway. So everybody knows there's two more meetings that we have to have to have those final yep. funds. Okay. <clears throat> Any more business for Copley Trust? I will be ready. Sorry. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. aye Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Judy, are you still there? Yes, I am. Just checking. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> we'll move into the regular portion of the select board meeting. Next is Dan. Do we have any additions or changes? For yes, I'm sorry. Um, we need to uh, accept Erica's resignation and we need to approve um, the 2019 and 2020 PVR 4155. The forms are laying there. Yes. The form for the listers. I see it. Okay. Next, approve minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Aye, aye. Brian. Harry. <clears throat> any opposed? Motion passed. Next is community concerns. Do we have some community concerns out there? Yep. Uh, good evening. This is uh, Jamie Brewster. Welcome, Jamie. I, um, I I would have, uh, or I attempted to get in on the video, but uh, I was not having a whole lot of luck. So we'll just have to make do with, with audio this evening. Okay, fair enough. Um, I uh, just wanted to take a moment um, and say thank you uh, to the board uh, for allowing me uh, and Jess Graham the time this evening uh, to present uh, what uh, was sent to you earlier um, today. Um, so if, if folks have a presentation that I sent, uh, please feel to uh, bring it out and uh, follow along. Uh, if not, uh, I'll go through it as best I can. Um, so as an introduction, uh, I just want to say that uh, what I've done here, what, what Jess is helping out with uh, together, uh, is following up on the request from the select board uh, at the meeting from uh, 119, uh, which was to you know gather information uh, regarding the trails at the Duhamel pit location uh, and come back to the to the board uh, uh, with that information um, and so that therein is is what I presented here um, I work in with this uh, in conjunction uh, with Jess Graham uh, who is also a Morristown resident uh, and is on this call uh, she'd like to just take a moment to to address the board so I'd just like to take a quick second to uh, pass this over to Jess Sounds good. Welcome, Jess. Hi. Hi there. Um, I just wanted to say thank you um, for hearing our concern. And um, like Jamie said, we both work together to um, to attempt to bring to you a unified voice of the recreational users of the Duhamel Pit um, trails. And um, I grew up in Morrisville and I've used those trails for over 30 years and you'll see a lot of, you know, like hard evidence in that, um, you know, what we could get together in the proposal or the, um, the survey and a lot of anecdotal ev evidence. And I just wanted to say, really appreciate you hearing us and I hope that we can come 
to an agreement that's amenable for everyone, for the town, for the taxpayers, and for the trail users. And um, that's it. I just wanted to say thanks for hearing us today. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Jess. Um, so continuing on, um, you know, the methodology that uh, that Jess and I used uh, was uh, to put together our, our statement uh, that's further uh, down in this presentation, um, as well as a small uh, survey uh, of uh, the folks that were signing uh, onto the statement. Uh, none of the survey questions were, were mandatory. Um, you know, it was totally uh, whether or not folks wanted to, to answer the questions. Um, uh, it was created using a Google form, um, and that website link that you see there uh, is an active link to the particular uh, form that was created. Uh, so if, if anyone is interested uh, to visit that site uh, to see what we put together, uh, even take a survey if you wish, um, it is still up and active uh, on the internet. Um, the form was disseminated. Uh, via email uh, to uh, certain folks that we had email addresses for, uh, as well as put up on uh, personal social media sites uh, to get uh, to get the message out, uh, so that folks could uh, could participate. Um, as of this morning, uh, and when this uh, data was finalized, we had come up with 185 folks who had signed on onto the onto the statement. Um, on the next page, uh, you'll see the statement uh, that folks uh, were signing on to. Uh, I'm not going to read it in its entirety, um, uh, but uh, in a synopsis, it's just saying that the folks that, that signed on uh, uh, are, are trail users. They appreciate the trails. They also appreciate the need uh, to uh, obtain gravel from that pit um, and, and are in hopes that the the town and the trail users can come to an agreement um, and a methodology to cross over the the haul road uh, in the particular location which seems to be uh, the biggest pain point um, uh, moving on to the next page uh, you can just see a couple of little maps there um, you know on on the left there's a map uh, showing the the, the tr portion of trail networks that are affected uh, directly by the uh, by the pit uh, the proposed pit. Um, I know that there is uh, sort of a, a difference in definition uh, in for some between myself and some in terms of uh, what I view as as trails lost. Uh, others see that as different as though it's uh, trails uh, that will just be discontinued for a while, but will eventually come back uh, when the pit is, is closed out and reclaimed. Uh, and, and I think that those are, uh, that's something that we may have to agree to disagree on uh, when it comes to that, that definition. Um, but regardless, uh, the mileage uh, of trail in the actual pit area, it's about a mile of trail there that's affected. Um, and with the uh, haul road coming through and the inability to cross the haul road, uh, we're looking about a mile and a half of trail uh, that's in jeopardy of not being able to be used. Um, and I can say that uh, the trails in the field, uh, I marked out uh, using Google Maps. Um, you could see the actual trails in the field. Uh, so I used the footage gained from a Google Maps view, uh, what's in yellow. Uh, I actually walked uh, and mapped with a GPS device to get uh, to get the footage and the trail markings there. Um, the circle is the area that we're we're most concerned about, um, and you can see a close up of that on the right, which comes directly from from the site plan that Mumley uh, has provided. Uh, some additional items that I want to add that that aren't included on this. Um, one is. The, there is a significant amount of more winter uh, bike riding than there used to be uh, due to the increased uh, fat bike usage. Um, and with the designation of the deer yard on what riders call going over to the left, uh, which is over towards the Terra Gorge, uh, 
not being able to ride out through there in the winter um, is it going to become more difficult to exit the trail system uh, when that gets closed off. So that's one piece uh, additionally that isn't addressed in here, uh, as well as uh, I have been recently notified uh, that the 10 Benz Association, um, and this is hearsay, I have not heard directly from them, uh, but the 10 Benz Association will be closing off their access points uh, to uh, the Morristown do Hamill property. Um, so uh, that's going to create uh, additional uh, unforeseen uh, access issues. Uh, and I understand that that access is uh, not controlled uh, by the town, uh, but it just is going to create additional access issues for the parcel uh, and for the recreational users uh, that we're going to have to sort of think about and, and work around. Um, in terms of what we came up with for the survey, uh, as we said, we had 185 people uh, respond to the survey. Uh, you know, and you can see the numbers there in the graph uh, from a percentage. 22% uh, of the residents were from Morristown, 28 from Lamoille, other Lamoille County towns, uh, and then you know 50% from other towns uh, outside of Lamoille County. So that's about a 50-50 break between Lamoille County uh, and outside the county. Um, uh, next to it, you can see uh, a graph that relates to how long folks have been recreating on those trails. Uh, Jess would be one of those folks who's been there, uh, you know, 21 to 30 years, you know, since the inception. Um, those trails have been, uh, you know, out there or in some way for quite some time. Um, you know, and then we have folks who've been there for, you know, they started this past summer, they've been one to five years. But I think what it really shows is that over time, um, it's gotten increased usage, um, but there's also, uh, it, it shows an interest and a desire for trails in the community. Um, you know, as this, you know, more folks are using the trails uh, over time, um, you know, so that's just showing a greater interest over time. Uh, on the next page, uh, you can see a breakdown between uh, winter months, uh, summer months, uh, in terms of how often folks are, are using the trail system. Um, you know, it's, it's a tricky one to get a handle on. You know, I would say this is obviously, you know, looking at it, you know, from an average. Uh, sometimes you may ride more during the week. Sometimes you may ride less during the week. You know, and that can be dependent on things like weather, whether there are trail closures at other net closures at other networks, which are bringing people in, um, holidays, which are bringing people in, and you don't want to ride when there's people there, uh, and, and so on. Um, Snowy weather months, uh, we, there is not as much uh, repeat usage during the week, uh, but there are still, you had 177 people respond that they're using that trail system uh, in the winter. Uh, and in speaking about the, the winter usage, um, I personally am not a fat biker. Um, I will occasionally snowshoe or ski down there. But I have to say, uh, for those that don't know about fat biking and what it takes to, to create a trail uh, for that purpose, it takes a lot of work. Um, and Hank and his crew uh, and the folks at fat, foot, fat Bike put hours, hours upon hours of work in every time it snows to, to pack it out with skis, to pack it out with snowshoes, uh, with the snow dog. You know, they put a lot of work in there. To, uh, to create what, from what I've heard, is one of the best fat biking trail networks uh, in the state, all at no cost um, to users. Uh, so, you know, moving on to the, uh, the comment section uh, in, in the survey, we allowed folks just a free form comment section just to leave whatever comment they might have. Uh, Jess and I were both really pleased. Um, with, with, with the thoughtful comments that, that people provided. Uh, or what you have here is just a small smattering uh, of the comments, uh, but they touch on things from, uh, you know, the, the Katie's Falls Trails Network being a community resource and the importance of that. Uh, another user is talking about uh, the, the environmental impact and what would happen you know, if we don't have a crossing where we're looking to have a crossing, what that does to the other trails. Um, and environmental impact. 
Uh, we have an individual talking about, you know, they made a life decision. They decided to build a house nearby, you know, and Katie's Falls Trail Network was one of the things that they considered. Um, communication, uh, people thankful for the communication between the town, um, you know, and this particular survey. Um, and then additionally talking about cooperation, you know, and, and mutual understanding. So I thought there were a lot of really excellent comments in here. Um, there are some comments and we, we've shared them uh, in, in what we sent you, which is every single comment there was um, that came to us. They were not filtered. Um, I may have put in some capital letters here and there and corrected a couple bits of you know, grammar and punctuation, but the comments are what they are. None of them were excluded uh, and none of them were altered for content. Um, and so you get a really good idea of uh, what people are thinking. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm rushing through this pretty quick and I, mostly, you know, you folks have a, have a busy evening and I don't want to take up all of it. Um, so, so in conclusion, you know, I'd say you know, Jess and I have uh, fulfilled that request uh, that came from the select board last week. Um, and, and we've showed uh, quite adequately the value of the Cadence Falls Trail Network uh, to its users. Um, we're hopeful that it, the addition uh, of some of this data that we've gathered and provided uh, can be useful uh, in helping uh, you folks and, and other folks in the town make future decisions uh, related to recreation. Uh, and, and I put that quote in there. Uh, that is one quote that, that came to me directly in an email. Uh, Most people we know would gladly pay more for gravel to save this place. Um, and that's just to show that there are people who are willing to pay uh, an additional tax to have open land, to have trails, to have places to, to recreate. Um, and, and I think that that's an important thing for the board to know. Uh, I understand that the board is always trying to be fiscally responsible and keep the taxes as low as possible. Uh, and, and, and I appreciate that. And as a Morristown taxpayer, I, I appreciate that. Um, but I, for one, and this person as well, uh, would pay more in our taxes to go get gravel someplace else. Um, so that's just uh, food for thought there. Um, as, as we look to the future with the trail network, um, I say status quo. Uh, and, and by that, I mean the trail users, the volunteers, we like the working relationship that we have um, between the town uh, and and us, and we'd like to keep things uh, that way. Uh, we'd like to work to be able to cross the hall road, um, but in terms of you know everything else, you know we're happy with it, and 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 we hope that the town is happy with it. Um, this is not something that we want to uh, market. We're not looking to turn it into a, a, a stove area trail network. We like our little local network. If people want to come from outside of town, outside of the county to use it, that's great. Uh, but we're not looking to create a map. Uh, we're not looking to have a website. Um, we're not looking to have a club or, or dues. Um, you know, so we're hoping that, you know, we can keep things moving um, the way they have been. Uh, for years. Um, and so in closing, uh, what we're asking for uh, is a formal commitment from the town uh, to, to work with us on finding a way to cross that hall road uh, in the area shown in the map in one of the earlier slides. Um, you know, I, I don't know how that happens. Um, I, I'd like to leave that up to, to, the, to the engineers. Uh, at least to start, uh, because they are certainly smarter than I, um, and I think that's what engineers do. They find creative solutions or solutions to, to problems such as this. Um, so I don't know uh, how the board comes about uh, coming up or uh, signing off on a formal commitment, uh, but that's that's what we're that that's what we'd like to see, and that that's what we're looking for. Um, so in that, I'll, I'll, I'll close my presentation. And again, uh, thank, thank you very much for your time. Um, and thank you very much for the opportunity. 
Great, right, Jamie. Thanks. I wanted to thank you for uh, the time you put into this. Such a comprehensive presentation here. Um, I believe all of the select board members, anyway, um, we we acknowledge all of those bullet points that you have pointed out to, and um, we certainly would like to come to an agreement. I think the thing would be to, to like you said, go through the engineering firm and um, try to work out the best situation maybe with one of uh, one of us on our board like eric who who manages the uh is a liaison for the highway and um and and kevin barrels as well our highway superintendent i think we could sit down and um maybe with yourself or somebody that represents your group and um and work it out and like i said with uh, mumley engineering um does any of our board have any other comments I just, I, I, both Jamie and Jeff put a lot of time into this in a very short notice time period. And, and it is a great presentation. Appreciate them uh, narrowing the focus down to that um, because there's a lot of concerns. There's a lot of uh, emotion behind this from the recreation committee, but they narrowed it down to a focus about the crossing of the hall road to continue to access those trails. I don't think it's an unreasonable request. Uh, I'm gonna meet with uh, Mr. Mumley tomorrow uh, to have a discussion and I'm gonna bring this presentation with me and that is exactly what we asked Jamie to do the last time uh, he was on the phone with us for the meeting. And uh, they came through and, and we were trying to cover. So uh, I will have a conversation tomorrow with uh, Mr. Mumley. We'll show him the area that you've proposed based on the current crossings, Jamie. And uh, we'll, we'll take it from there and I'll be back in touch. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't mean to be a thorn in anybody's side and, and be repetitive, but I'm just curious what it takes to get a formal commitment from the board on this I think, matter. I think actions are going to speak louder than words uh, on this one. I, I don't think there's any board member, and if there is, they can speak up, but I don't think any board member has any opposition to your request here uh, in creating that crossing. As far as putting something formally in place, um, like I said, our, our permit application is completed and been in the process for some time. We can't change anything with it in that without starting that entire process over. But our, our actions, I, I will I go out on a limb and say that I guarantee you that our actions will prove out that we're willing to uh, to work with this. You guys have given us a, a pretty good area in that circle to uh, define a spot that will work well and give uh, Mumbley Engineering a chance to take a look at it for uh, uh, the ability to make that happen. But I think it's a matter now, just give us a little time to react to this and talk to the engineer and I'll come back to you with a, with a proposal. How about Brian or Judy? Do you have any thoughts? I, I appreciate the presentation. It was very, as you said, Bob and Eric, it was very well put together and presented. But I wanted to do to mention about the deer yard, which is really the state's call, not our call. That they have to, they should not be doing any recreating in that area because it does um, interfere with the, the deer's ability to um, survive during the winter. I, 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 Judy, I, I, I understand that, um, and I do know that that was, <laughs> I do know that that was a state uh, designation, um, and I'm not, I was not certainly trying to, to point fingers at the town in that regard. I was just pointing out that because there, that has been designated uh, a deer yard, that that is going to create additional uh, difficulties within the trail network but I was not trying to point fingers at the town, just stating a fact. Okay, yeah, I just, yeah, I just wanted people to know that um, who, who did it, who decided that, and the reason behind it. Thank you. Thanks, Judy. How about Brian? Uh, hi, this is Brian. Um, I have no problem trying to see if we can come up and solve something. Um, I, I think it's a good thing. Uh, I just wanted to say one thing I hear that the taxpayers would just as soon pay for gravel. Well, we're talking 41 on that chart of Morsel's taxpayers. Well, that's a lot of money to divide up between 41 taxpayers that want to pay more taxes. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, like I said, yeah, but I, I'd like to work with it. I don't know. Um, the main thing I want to say is, you know, to us, it's been really important that we got this pit for gravel and sand for our roads. 
But other than that, I'd like, I hope it works out. I'm willing to work if it will. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, I would just like to say something really quickly, um, if I may. Yeah. Um, again, thank you so much for hearing us, and we really appreciate the opportunity to um, to get together to present a cohesive voice for the recreational users at the um, Duhamel Pit property. Um, I just want to speak to um, Brian's comment. I do appreciate, yeah, of course, 41 of us are not going to uh, be able to shoulder the burden of the gravel pit costs, and we're not um, looking to shut down the gravel pit operations. But I also want to just put out there um, in terms of the methodology and the um, process that we went to to gather the information. We just had a couple weeks um, to put this together, and um, it's a very um, delicate dance, I think, for all of us. No one really wants to bring down um, lots of regulation um, for this trail system. So we were really strategic about not sharing this survey um, to a broader community um, where we may have gotten a lot more, um, we would have certainly gotten a lot more input from more Morristown residents. Um, so we just, um, I just want to put out there, that was just part of the methodology and it was strategic on our part that we didn't want to blow this thing up um, to bring down, you know, like a bigger a hubba hubba baloo around it than needs needs to be at this point. Thank you, Jess. Is there any other comments from anyone? I just want to thank uh, thank you, Jess, and thank Jamie for bringing us to us tonight. And uh, we'll be following up with you guys after Eric has a chance to uh, meet with Mumley Engineering and and he has time to prepare um, so we can figure things out. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Do we have any other community concerns tonight? Dennis. Speed limit sign on my name from uh, 15 and 100 intersections is going to blow me off left on the east side. I don't know if it's us or the state, but I'm sure PDs probably noticed it. I noticed that I've been doing like two miles an hour, which means 32. But the sign says two. Or 22. The radar. Or 12. You got that, Dan? Uh, no sign. There's no number on that left hand side. So okay. Right. The... Yeah. For so a we're in Toronto 2020, Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. Just noticed that today, so I figured I'd just mention it. Thank you, Dennis. No yeah, sort of like uh, Lower Elmer Mountain Road had a modification to the 35 and it said 85 for a while with a paint can. I think that's worn off now. But. Yeah, well, this is that LED flasher, and I like to get a front respondent from it because I match that to my speedometer to get it close. See how close you can go? Yeah, I'm trying to get it to triple, but I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, thank, thanks, Dennis. All right, we'll move into liquor control. Make a motion then to the liquor control board. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are now in liquor, liquor control. So we have, Sarah, we have a few um, renewals, right? Yeah, there are four uh, renewals, Walgreens, CVS, Kinney's, Hannaford's. They're all second class licenses. No issues, Richard? No. Okay. Make a motion to approve all four. I have, a, I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. aye. Brian. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Do I hear a motion to come out? You do. A second? Second. Second. All in favor say yeah. aye. Gary uh, stop it. Motion aye. Motion is passed. <clears throat> Next, new business. Do you want to do the uh, first two? Accept Erica's resignation as one of them. 
uh, however you'd like to do it. Yeah. Um, I think the board got a, an email last week, all, all members of the board. Um, Erica, of course, she's been here for a long time, but she's from North Carolina and was trying to work remotely. Um, but she has tended her final resignation and her last day of doing any work. Um, well, let's try to close business. Yeah. So we accept her letter of resignation. Okay. Second? I'll second it. Okay, any further discussion? Thank you, Erica, for her service. Yeah, I was chatting with Judy about it, and I think it'd be nice, uh, nice to send her like a thank you note or something. I know there's during these times of COVID, it's hard to get together and do anything, but um, actually, Judy had kind of a good idea if we could send her like I don't know if they have like a postcard or a mural photo of the town or something that we could sign a thank you note. You know, I think Trisha has stuff like that, but it'd be nice to do that. I did chat with Erica and. Uh, I told her thank you and everything, so uh, she was she she was happy. But uh, change, you know, closing this chapter of her life and moving on. So, all right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Eric or Brian. Aye. Judy. Aye. Motion is passed. Unanimous. Bob. Yes. I think we forgot to approve the minutes, didn't we? No, we did it. The slug board minutes? Yep. Yep. We're oh, okay. I guess I missed it. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? I thought you Sleeping. said I was doing. Sleeping. <laughs> no, but thanks for, don't hesitate to remind me things like that. We need to make sure everything gets done. It's not always easy to operate this way, half here and half not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then the next uh, next one you added, that 4155 listers. Yeah, so there's copies of this. This came from... Uh, the, the listers are from Harry, our assessor. Uh, so so the, the board of listers and the board of select board. We have no suits or anything pending for these two years. We did for the one year that's been settled. So I would ask the board to approve. And I think uh, Elizabeth's got a copy for everybody to sign. Yes. Yeah. I make a motion to approve it. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Judy? What? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Did you hear? Did you hear what we were talking about? Yes. And I, I think, yes. You said aye. Aye, yeah. How about you, Brian? Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. All right, next, the new business approve updated administrative assistant to town administrator job description. Dan? Um, this is something that actually has been through both the, in the financial office and uh, the town clerk's office. And just trying to make a few little minor changes to this job. You know, we've got the job advertised. We're closing out the advertisement. And hopefully um, next week we'll start doing some interviews. So we just want to update. It hadn't been updated in a long time. There was just a few little minor changes and things we thought would help things flow better in the office. So no big changes at all. Right. Really. Just an update. Just an update. Do you want a motion to? Yes, please. Okay. I move that we accept the updated version of the job description for the administrative assistant of the town of ministry. Second. I have, I have a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Judy. Aye. 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 Motion is passed unanimously. <laughs> All right, next, review and approve the highway certificate. This is one that we have to do every year. This is uh, the certificate of highway mileage that we send into the agency of transportation that updates our um, official town highway map. This year, we added Fulton Meadow, um, right. which is, uh, will become highway uh, number 123, and the appropriate mileage are in those slots for, for what we've added total. Um, so I'd ask the, the board to approve that, and we'll get it signed and sent in to the state. I move to approve the uh, certificate of highway mileage for year end of 2021. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, I would. Um, I was curious about number three under part two. Okay. Reclassified, remeasured, and signed. 
Yeah, those were a, a part of the repaving project that they did on Route 100, where they realigned those intersections. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. But the intersection they realigned at, at, at 100 on Randolph Road, that was in Stowe. Uh, well, that's Stowe, yeah. That's Stowe side. No, 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 we realigned right down here. They realigned right at Watercroft Hill when they redid that. You know what we're talking about? I call it the SOS turn sound. Took away the slip lane, Judy. Where? You know when you turn on the Randolph Road? Yes. Going out of town by the police station? That was all realigned. Oh, they did away oh, all the oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Judy? Aye. Aye. Brian? Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. All right, next, set pay rate for EMS personnel providing vaccinations. Bill. Hi, good evening. Bill, good evening. Sure. Yeah, come a little closer. Come closer. Hi, good evening. Um, we, uh, we spoke at the last select board meeting about our participation in the uh, state EMX va uh, EMS vaccination plan, uh, where we're, uh, we're rolling out about 350 EMS providers statewide to assist with vaccination uh, in a, what's going to be a, uh, a mass undertaking as this rolls forward in sequential steps uh, uh, to get uh, uh, people vaccinated against COVID-19. Um, as part of that, we uh, initiated a contract with uh, with the state. Uh, the state will be paying us uh, $70 per hour uh, for each person uh, that participates from our agency in these clinics. Uh, in addition to uh, mileage, if we use an ambulance to go do a house visit once that part of the plan rolls out, uh, things like that. Uh, so what we've developed uh, is a uh, job description for a temporary unbenefit, un unbenefited position as EMS, EMS vaccinator. Um, I did, uh, did some polling of our uh, EMS colleagues at what the prevailing rate that they were going to be paying uh, their staff or staff that they're bringing on to do this. Uh, most of them, uh, most of them were falling within the thirty to fifty dollar an hour range. Uh, the ones closest to us were coming in at $35 and $40 an hour. I'd like to keep our people here and not uh, have someone that we've trained up here locally uh, go to another service that's going to pay more. I'd like to keep those people here in town to serve Morrisville residents, Lamoille County residents as this program goes forward. Uh, so we've set a, a, a compensated rate for $45 an hour for an EMS vaccinator. Uh, and like I said, it's temporary. We recognize it's a temporary unbenefited, unbenefited position. Uh, kind of recognizing their baseline education and training as nationally registered state licensed personnel uh, who have also completed uh, a lot of additional education that's been pushed out to us from the Department of Health in order to participate in this program. Sounds good. Any questions for Bill? I do. I, the question that being, because the rate of pay is a little higher than those around us, are you going to be taking on volunteers from outside the current list of volunteers? No, sir. From this? Okay. No, sir. You will uh, draw some attention. No, that we're, 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 this is strictly for our, our, our people who are currently rostered with us. Okay. We have sent our, our initial uh, vaccinator roster to the Department of Emergency Medical Services. Uh, I sent that on Thursday. We already need to send them an update because we've had four more people come on board with the program from our from our staff. Uh, so we'll get that out to uh, to them tomorrow with our updated list. Uh, but this is strictly our staff. We're not looking to bring on additional staff uh, to do this. Chase, away anybody that would like to join our volunteer portion of our program? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. If they if they if they want to if they want to join it, it it'll be for the whole it'll be right. for the whole smash. Just right. have to be a uh, yeah. You want to taste some gravy? You got to eat some potato too. Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Anything else to be choose that this you know this made a commitment that this will not interfere with nine one one service. Right. 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 
911 always comes first. Right. Our or duty crew. Our right. duty crew. If we don't, uh, if we don't have staff to help out of the clinic, it's a simple matter of saying we don't have staff that day, and they will supplement with other with other staff from other either other districts or from even other agencies, uh, health department, medical reserve corps, things like that. There's no double dipping. None. Great. Do I hear a motion? Uh, make a motion to approve the rate of pay of forty five dollars per hour, along with the job description for EMS Max. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? Just make that a temporary part time. Correct. So the temporary part time, no benefits position. Yes. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Judy? Aye. aye. Ryan? Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. Thanks, Bob. Bob. I was curious where the where they're getting their um um vaccines. Go ahead, Bill. Uh that that is still kind of being fleshed out. Uh there are gonna be um some EMS services, especially the ones that are initially gearing up to do mobile vaccinations, uh, have uh, actually had uh, National Guard deliver medical quality refrigerators to them and they'll be storing some of the vaccine uh, on site. I don't know if that's uh, going to be in the plans for us. We were, uh, we hope to have a phone call with uh, Will Moran, the new state EMS chief. Uh, uh, well, we were hoping for today, but we're hoping uh, by, by tomorrow we'll have a phone call with Will. Um, so uh, we may either be keeping it on site, like I pointed out, that uh, that ambulance we got last year does have a refrigerator capability in it, uh, which could make us uh, a, a benefit uh, when we start doing that. Uh, otherwise, I believe this. I believe the uh, stockpile of vaccines that we'll be getting will be coming. Okay. Sound good, Judy? Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thank you all. All right, we'll move to old business. Review and approve junk ordinance. Todd, is that you? I'm here. Good evening. Are you there now? Uh, I can explain this. We, okay. You guys had approved this, I don't know, several months ago. Yeah. Um, and, and when we went back there, the first thing happened is it really didn't get posted correctly, so it needed to be reapproved. The other thing was there were some mistakes in it. There were some, some things that weren't filled out within it. So it really wasn't, quite frankly, valid hearing to have for you guys anyway a valid approval process. So um, and finally we caught it. it. It slipped everybody's view per se to get it all done correctly. So the corrections have been made. Um, all the things that need to be filled in correctly are there. And now what we want to do is we're asking you to approve it and then we'll make sure it gets posted correctly this time. Did Richard ever see this for abandoned motor vehicle? You see this part? Yeah, and it has, I'm sure it hasn't changed. <clears throat> it's, it's, it, it is the exact same wording you guys uh, approved last time. The only okay. except is the uh, I removed the word spent in relation to tires and put in the word used for tires and gets instead so not to fight with people regarding if the tire is spent. Okay. Sounds good. I make a motion to approve the ordinance regulating the disposal of solid waste and the outdoor storage of junk and junk vehicles. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, Bob, I got one question. Uh, Bob, maybe you can help me with this. But section 4, uh, paragraph B. Uh, it be unlawful for any person or persons to dump, deposit, throw, or leave solid waste or cause the permit to dumping, depositing, placing, or leaving of solid waste on any public or private property or into any waters in the town of Morristown, except as follows. And if you, to me, if you read those next four, it means that you can dispose of anything in those four sentences on public or private property or dumping it in the water. Am I reading that wrong? 
I would have to look at that more closely. This is all we're doing is adopting VLCT's model ordinance here. It's not something that I wrote. I changed a couple words just to make it town specific, but that's VLCT's model language. So I'm assuming it's good. I mean, attorneys that make much more an hour than I do uh, craft that language. Uh, I'd have to sit down and look at it with you, Gary, if uh, in regard to that question. I'm not really, I couldn't answer at the top of my head here. Yeah, I, I understand it's not your, uh, not your verbiage, but I'm just wondering if other people read it the same way as I do. Mm. To me, it, it's defeating the purpose of what they want to do here. If you want to highlight that section, um, leave it in my box and I'll grab it tomorrow. And I'll call Garrett back from LCT and run it, uh, run it up the flagpole with him. Yeah, I got it all, I got it all done. I did my homework. Yeah, it looks, it looks strange. Does that read right to you? Yeah. yeah to me. Except as follows, which. Right, except it follows. It's almost like that wording's not correct. All right. Uh, I see what Gary's talking about, Todd. That'd be great if you could circle, circle back with us. Yeah, Gary, just leave your copy if you wouldn't mind in my box and I'll talk to Gary tomorrow and um, I'm sorry, I'll talk to Garrett tomorrow and uh, get back to you guys on uh, any changes if needed in that little wording. And if we approve this as it is, we can always go back in and change it anyway, right? I would defer to Dan on that one. Yeah, Dan says yes. If we can go ahead, I mean, we gotta post it if we find that we've, we've done something wrong, we can we'll change come back it. to you. I, I, you know, I'm kind of looking at it too, I'm kind of, Trying yeah, it's to, weird. It's, it's, it is a it's something difficult. Yeah. But we'll yeah. see what the attorneys say, um, because a lot of this is a, attorney speak, so to speak. I think the, the, legally, I think the intent. If they didn't have that in there, it would say that you couldn't even do it on your own property. Right. The exceptions are allowing you to do have a compost pile on your property, because the the original book, the the general sense of this is that you can't discard solid waste anywhere. Period. Correct. Except that, and it talks about the individual person or persons dump on their own property. So you're allowed to have a compost pile on your property. However, it's I'm not an attorney, and I'm not going to argue. You can talk about it better than we do. I mean, that's to me that says that you can dispose of all that stuff in those four sentences. Okay, we'll find out. No, I don't know. But, but in the meantime, we can approve it and then make changes yep. if we need to. If we need to, then we can come back. Okay. All right. I think we're on pretty good footing, but it's always great to ask. That's the one source signature. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion is passed unanimously. Thanks, Todd. Happy to help. Okay. Next, we have approve the warrants. Do I have a motion? All right, I make a motion to remove the warrant. Sorry. I'll second it. For the discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Brian? Uh, Brian, aye. Gary? Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, TA report. Just one thing for me, and I really want to thank the, the town staff and the staff in here um, last week. Getting the town report together is a big deal. It, it takes a lot of, a lot of effort. So I think uh, we're at 160 pages or so for the document. And it, it flows through every office in the building, almost in everybody's hands. And you know, if you make one little change, it changes someplace else. But everybody came together last week and worked hard on the town report and got it out. Um, and I really appreciate their effort. Kind of one of those things that if you don't have everybody working on it together, it, it doesn't work well. Um, and they did a great job. And, and secondly, I'd, I'd like to thank the, the board for recognizing me as a dedication for the town report. So, Could keep um, that from you. Uh, you know, it's like I was telling Tina, usually you guys decide and then, you know, nothing, you know, then I write something. That year, I, this year, I really couldn't do that. But <laughs> once again, it's, it's a great honor. I mean, I'm, I'm really here if you look at the, the length of the, the town. I'm just a little flash in the fire, so to speak, but I, I appreciate the, the select board's recognition for um, uh, by dedicating that town report to me. I sincerely do. Thank you. Well deserved. Thank you. All right, any questions for Dan? All right, thanks, Dan. Next is select board concerns. Gary. 
Judy. Oh, thanks, thanks. No, thanks. No. Brian. No, just uh, thanking everybody for the hard work they did on the town reports and Dan for working with them and great job. Yeah. Eric. I'm all set. Great. And I just want to thank Erica again for 13 and a half years for the town. I think she's done a really good job and uh, wish her uh, well and her new adventures down south. So that's all I have. Next, any other business? Bill. I just wanted to quickly follow up on the email I sent out last week. Uh, that we've been, uh, we've been uh, Morris County MS has been named a pediatric safe agency by the state of Vermont. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, uh, there's a handful of agencies in the state that have achieved that recognition. It's a recognition of uh, both initial and continuing education of our staff, um, the, uh, the necessary equipment on the ambulance that either meets or exceeds uh, both the state and national standards uh, in delivering care to uh, uh, injured, acutely injured and ill children. Uh, and that goes from newborns all the way up to teenagers. Uh, so, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy for the staff that, that, that we've achieved that. Great. Thank you. Anybody with anything else? Thank you, Thank you Bill. You rock. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that we go into executive session. I can read you that, Gary. If you, I, I, it's uh, like my reading time. Oh, you got it? <laughs> okay. Go for it. Go ahead. I'd make a motion to enter executive session to discuss appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee to the body will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage pursuant to Title I PSA Section 313 4 of the Vermont Statutes. Motion seconded by. Uh, second. Second. Any further discussion? Did you include me in that? Oh, I include Dan Lindsay. Include Dan. All in favor say aye. 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 Brian. Aye. Gary. Aye. Just so okay, everybody knows, just um, you won't be able to make any decisions after you come out of that good session right. since you'll be ending the, the really the public portion of the meeting, other to a, other than to adjourn. Right. So um, just for the board's knowledge, I kind of set it up already. I'm going to call Judy on my cell phone. Yeah. And we're going to call Eric back. Call Brian. Right, yeah. Brian back on on the uh, yep. the office phone. Just sure. for, for everybody's knowledge on how we're going to do that. Okay. Hopefully. Yeah, and the public portion of the meeting will be ended. Yes. Yep.